So Lee, we've interviewed all kinds of people with all kinds of perspectives on Diana's death, from Lady Colin Campbell to David Icke. There's so many different theories. And you said that you're friends to this day with Trevor Reese jones the bodyguard who survived the crash. What's his perspective on what happened then? Well, Trevor can't remember. That's the thing with him. That's, that's what, that's, it was eating him up, you know. I, when when he, he came to, to the family house in Oxted and... Uh, and he came and, and I saw him. He was, he was about my size, you know, six foot two, about 15 stone, he's a thick guy, ex paratrooper. And he came and I'm looking at this shell of a man, hideous. I think he had 152 pieces of titanium in his face, which they reconstructed from one photograph, just one grainy photograph. Uh, and I saw him, he must have lost half his body weight and he couldn't walk. Uh, other than being assisted by someone. And and I said, Trev, are you sure you want to go to Doldy's grave, which was on the ground? It's a massive place to have. And he said, Lee, I, I really want to go. I said, come on, I'll take you, mate. So I put him in a golf buggy and I drove him out there, probably about, I don't know, about half a mile. Drove him out and drove him to where Doldy was laid to rest. And I picked him up like a child out of the the car and we went over to the graveside and he was really upset and he's looking and, and confused as well. And it was, it was a really emotional time for me and him. And and I'm holding him and he said, Lee, I've been involved in the biggest thing the world has ever seen and I can't remember a thing and it just eats me up. That's crazy, eh? He can't remember a thing. So... What um, like he's not got complete amnesia for his whole life though. What do you know? What the last no. thing was he remembered? Uh, he can remember being in Paris. He could be remember things before, but he just could not remember anything um, from probably leaving the hotel to to when he recovered in hospital. So it was just that that, that space of time before the incident. Yeah. Yeah, and what actually um, happened. So what what do you think about the rumours that uh, she was pregnant and stuff like that? I, I, I tell you, what, I don't know. I know when it came out in the press when she was in Santa Fe, and there's a picture of her there with a, a swollen tummy and is she pregnant. And when we looked at it in the press, we said that that's been that's been doctored, man. She wasn't like that. But, but back in the day, then, you know, they were doing stuff like that. So the picture wasn't a, a, a true picture of her, but. We had a little sweepstake, you know, because we didn't know, and it never crossed our minds until we saw it in this in this um, newspaper, national newspaper. Um, so, whether she was pregnant or whether she wasn't, I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't. I just don't know. But what I know do you? Sorry, sorry, go on, go on, go on. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep going. The, when you read the conspiracy theories, and and obviously, I know a lot about what happened in the tunnel and all the rest of it and the time delays and all that stuff. And I get when things are uncertain and people just say, I don't get that. It's easy for people to, to make reference to various things. So although I've not got involved in it, I know we, we know now that the, the, the accident didn't kill her. It was, the, it was the time delay on getting from the accident to the hospital. That's why she died with a small bleed in a, one of her lungs. One of the latest pathologists has said, so, you know, people ask, you know, why? Why was the, the crime scene? Well, was it a crime scene? Why was it washed and jet washed shortly after? Why were the cameras off? Why didn't they find these bikes uh, that would follow in her? Um, and there's a lot of whys there, isn't there? And I just don't know. I, I think it was an accident. I think it was, I think it was caused by somebody else in that tunnel. And I think those people were working for a government, just keeping an eye on her. I think it was just something that, whether they were involved or not, I don't, I, I think it was just a tragic action. She might have nipped something, hit something. I don't know, or, you know, the driver. But um, but, I, but, I, but what I do think is that there were people from a government in that tunnel at that time that saw what happened. Lee, can you detail what happened in the tunnel then, please? So... Uh, so it depends on what account you, you're listening to. So uh, the driver was speeding. He'd had alcohol. And they run into, you know, one of those 
pillars in the tunnel and 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 the crash hits uh they don't have the seatbelts on Dodie would never wear a seatbelt uh i'd fall out with him i would never drive any of the family without a seatbelt and if mr fire had caught you doing that you were sacked Dodie was a bit of an enigma he hated wearing his seatbelt uh but he knew when I when I got in with him, he'd put it on. I just wouldn't move. I'd call his dad and say, you need to speak to your son. He won't put his seatbelt on. I didn't care. <laughs> I worked I worked for Mr. Fired. I didn't work for him. Uh, and so Trevor had his seatbelt on. When he left, he didn't have it on. And this is another conspiracy theory saying, well, he then put it on later. Well, that's standard drills for a bodyguard. Uh, you know, when you're leaving, you don't put it on. And when you go to a, when you get into to your venue, you take it off. And there's a lot of reasons for it, but one of the reasons in Northern Ireland you used to do it, you used to set off and leave your door open. If there's a device on, you'd hope it'd blow you out your car if you couldn't check your car if you're in an area where you couldn't check it. So it's probably ingrained into a lot of the British mill. Um, so him having his seatbelt on in the tunnel and he didn't when he was setting off, that's standard, uh, standard drills, but... When the car hit, his body could have a seatbelt on. He took all the impact for the princess. So she only had a couple of, a broken arm, I think, and a, a cut on her leg and this tear in her lung. So her injuries weren't life-threatening at that time. What happened to them made them life-threatening and, and uh, eventually killed her. This is absolutely mind-boggling. So how far away was a hospital that could have saved her life? I don't know the exact distance Sean I, it's something I've, I've, I've really I, I've looked at it a lot but it's something I, I try and detach myself from but I think I'm right in saying that you and I could walk there quicker than it took ca carrying someone than it took for that vehicle but but apparently the, the the French claim it was protocol at the time and whether it was or whether it wasn't but it was interesting that we, we had the inquiry into the accident. Years later, we had the coroner's inquiry. And a lot of the evidence that came out in the coroner's inquiry contradicted the first inquiry. But by then, it was out of the public mind. It was gone. It was, you know, let's move on. But the French pathologist and their toxologist didn't come and give evidence. And the doctor didn't either, I believe. Um, because he said it wasn't in it wasn't in line with their national security plan. Wow! When this starts happening, and it gives people calls to think, I don't get that. That's what the issue is, and I think the issue is because there was people from government agencies there. They started manipulating the story, and that's when people start going, "Hang on, I don't get this." And then once you start, you can't stop. So, uh, yeah, I do think there's people in that tunnel who could tell us exactly what happened. I do think it was an accident. I don't think it was uh, it was any attempt to, to kill her. I think it was just purely an accident. And there's people in there that went, we can't be seen to be here, and they bugged out.